welcome back to my channel it's Roxanne and today is the beginning of Hispanic Heritage Month so I wanted to come on here and give you some of my favorite Hispanic reads and um, some that maybe you guys might want to try out um, this coming month or sometime in the future hopefully um, and then I'll talk about some that I haven't read yet but uh, that are definitely on my list to read and then some that I don't even have yet but are on my radar and I really want to get to sometime soon. Um, so today is the 15th um, and I believe it goes through October 15th so it's a full month where you can try to educate yourself on Hispanic heritage and history and culture, um, read books about them, watch TV shows. Um, one of my favorite TV shows with Hispanic characters is Jane the Virgin. I think it's well-rounded. I think it's um, it doesn't take itself too seriously, but it's still so funny and lighthearted. I just absolutely love it. Um, so right now we'll start with one of the most recent reads, and it's In the Country That We Love by Diane Guerrero. You probably know her from Orange is the New Black. Um, I think Maritza is her character in that, in that show on Netflix. And this book is about her story, her and her family's story. They moved here from Colombia. Um, and they were undocumented and one day her parents are taken away and deported so it's about you get to know a little bit about their life here together and the um, how careful they had to be and how scared they always were um, that they were they were gonna be found out and, and, and deported um, and then when that happens you you get to see how she deals with it how she um, had to really depend on the on on friends and on friends families because when her parents were deported no one came back to check on her so she was 14 years old alone no parents no nothing no money no resources because she's a teenage girl um so it's about her life it's a really sad and heartfelt story um this one i probably recommend that you read uh, an audiobook. Uh, I'm sure she's probably the the narrator, but I, this one is written very, very casually, which I didn't really have much of a problem with. But I feel like the way that it's written would be better received if it was um, through an audiobook because it almost feels like you're just sitting down with her and she's just telling you her story. And it's I'm sure the way that she just talks normally. She didn't sort of try to sugarcoat anything or make it sound pretty or anything. So it's incredible. It's a very casual uh, read, right? Very casually written book. Uh, but I think that you might be able to enjoy this one a little bit more um, as an audiobook. Again, I didn't have a problem with it, but you might not either. So, but there's that one. There's this one that I read back in high school. And it's The House of the Spirits by Isabel Allende. She is an incredibly important writer um, in our culture. She is renowned. She, her books are studied everywhere. And this is, I believe, her debut novel. And it's about, um, I, th I think it might have some magical realism in it. I read it so long ago that I barely remember. But it goes through three generations of the Truevas, Trueba family, if I'm not mistaken, and it's uh, just about their trials and tribulations, how they overcome uh, their, their issues, how they come together as a family, how they don't come together as a family. So it's a really good read. It's about family values, it's character studies, and it's, it's a very good, very important read in our culture. So I definitely recommend this one and absolutely anything ever written by Isabel Allende. I recommend. Then is when I was Puerto Rican. This one is by Esmeralda Santiago. This one is very important to me personally being from Puerto Rico. My mother would always tell me stories about what it was like to live in the mountains and El Campo, you know, what she, what she had to experience as a child, being poor, what her family had to do to get by. And I, I always loved listening to those stories, but this book, what it did was it brought it all to life on a different level. I, I was, I was reading it, I could see everything that my mother was 
had been telling me all these years and this is all about her life in Puerto Rico and then um, her and her family come to New York to try and get jobs and, and try and have a better life and there's a lot of heart and it's hard to read at times and you see the struggles that they had to go through you see the impact that the United States begins to have on the island and um, this what this book just really touched me in a lot of very special ways so I definitely recommend this one whether you are from Puerto Rico or not I think this is a great great read if you do want to know a little bit more about what, what it's like then I definitely recommend this one so after I finished I realized that my camera had stopped recording so I'm pretty annoyed because this would actually be the third time I'm trying to record this so let me just get right back into it and get it done <laughs> Uh, the next book that I want to talk about is The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros. This book is very popular. She is very popular. I know a lot of my young fellow feminist, Latinx, beautiful women love her work and love this book. It's told in vignettes and it's about this girl named Esperanza and her life in Chicago and her coming into her own person and what that is like with her family and her neighbors and living in this in this country and it's it's really short so it it would be a great read any any time that you have a little bit of extra time or please do set some time aside to read this book it's very very good um and i can't wait to get to all the rest of her work because they all come very well recommended to me so here's this one um then there is esperanza rising by pam muñoz rian ryan and this is a middle grade book about a family from Mexico who the father of the family is killed and so in order to continue to survive and to live they have to move to the United States and this is during the Great Depression so they come to the United States looking for work but so is everybody else so it's difficult having to find work especially when you don't know the language you're afraid that others will be chosen before you and that you won't have enough money to feed your family so it's about family it's about love it's about this time it touches on racism and it touches on a lot of very important topics so this book is great as a middle grade book but it's also great for adult readers as well you get to see the beautiful character development that Esperanza goes through from being a young spoiled somewhat bratty kid because she was wealthy and never really had to work for anything everything was always given to her to now seeing the the sacrifices that her family has to make in order to survive and having to step up and work herself and it's just a beautiful read and you really grow with esperanza and i, I definitely recommend this one now, up next is one of my favorite books of all time. I'm sure you guys have heard about this one because it's a lot of people fav a lot of people's favorite books or one of their favorite books and with good reason. This book is so so beautiful. This book is amazing. There is not a single page, I don't think, that doesn't have some line written in it that just touches you. So this this book is um by Benjamin Arias Science. Aristotle and Dante discovered the secrets of the universe. I don't know if I said that, but right there um and this book is about two mexican american boys who meet one summer and you get to sort of grow with them and see their friendship develop and see how they deal with school and with love and with their friendship and with their family and this is about fighting for what you love and fighting for what you care for it's about family values again um and it's just wonderful it's beautiful it's majestic and lyrical and I definitely recommend it. Please, please do yourself a favor and read this book if you haven't yet. I read it probably about a year ago now and it just completely blew my mind. I can't wait to read it again. I'm probably gonna read it again sometime in the beginning of the next year because I have so many other books that I have to read before the end of the year, but I'm definitely gonna read this again soon and I'm sure that I'm gonna love it as much as I loved it the first time. So yeah, there's this one. And anything else written by him, if it's half as good as this book, you're going to absolutely love it. Then is The Book of Unknown Americans by Cristina Enriquez. This book is goes through multiple points of views, but it's mostly centered around 
this family. It's a parents and the daughter. They come from Mexico, I believe. Yes. And the daughter had a bad accident in Mexico. And so they moved to the United States to get her some good education, to get good work and things like that. And so they end up living in this apartment complex with many other immigrants, many other Latinx individuals. And so through their story, you also get little snippets of all of these other individuals' lives. And it's all so eye-opening and you see the different perspectives and the different feelings and thoughts had by people who come here, people who make the decision to leave their home and come in search of a better life. And even for someone like me who who is Latinx and though I'm I was born a citizen because I'm Puerto Rican, I have many friends who whose families came in the same way that this family did and it's always been something that's incredibly dear to my heart and so even I who've always had that dear to my heart I have have always taken the time to learn learn something through this book and you it makes you think and so I definitely this is a great book and it's a great story I definitely recommend this one Next is actually, I put it back, but it's right here. Uh, Labyrinth Lost. I've just finished that one for Diversathon, and it is an urban young adult fantasy about this family of brujas who live in Brooklyn. And the middle daughter, they have three daughters, the middle daughter is has been trying to hide her magic her whole life. She's afraid of her magic. She thinks it's gonna bring nothing but turmoil and death and suffering to her family. And so she, on the day that all of her family and friends gather to bless her and bless her magic, she tries to get rid of it. And in doing so, somehow manages to get rid of her whole family. So it's about her trying to rectify that mistake and her coming into her own and coming into her magic. And I enjoyed it a lot. There is so much culture embedded into the story uh, that I saw, even though my culture might be a little bit different, I saw myself and I saw parts of my culture reflected in it and I enjoyed it a lot. They had some, it has LGBT aspects as well, which that's great. Um, and yeah, I saw myself reflected in the characters and in the culture, and I thought that was great. I do wish that it would have been a little bit longer, and we would have got to see more of the world. But it's a series, I believe, so I'm sure well, that we're gonna get we're gonna get a lot more, and I'm really really excited. So yeah, I definitely recommend that one. That one's by Soraya Cordova, and then I have two books that I have not actually gotten to yet, but they both come very well recommended and by authors who are very highly esteemed. And the first is This Is How You Lose Her by Junot Diaz. He is a Dominican writer. And this book is, I believe, multiple different love stories, all of which have one person in common, and that's Junior, I believe. Yes. And that's pretty much all I know about it. He is the person that sort of unites all of these love stories. And I've heard great things about this one. I've heard great things about his writing, that he has a very unique writing style don't really know what that means yet because i haven't read i haven't read it but i'm definitely very intrigued and really want to read it i was watching marinas's video a couple of days ago and she mentioned something about this possibly having being connected to another one of his books so i have to look more into that i don't know if i just misunderstood but i want to see if maybe i can read this one first on its own or if i should read another one of his books first if anybody knows please let me know please let me know down below but i'm really excited to get to this one it's not very long either so i'm sure it wouldn't take me terribly long to read um but yeah i've heard a lot of great things about him and this book and his writing and also you should follow him on facebook he has a lot of very insightful things to say and i love seeing the articles that he writes and the things that he talks about you should definitely follow him and buy his books and then the next is the world-renowned um, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. He is a Colombian novelist. This one is Love in the Time of Cholera, but back in high school I read... What is it that I read? Um, Chronicles of a Death Foretold. Cronica de una Muerte Anunciada, which I'm like 99% sure it says as well. Uh, this one is about these two young individuals, Florentino and Fermina 
who fall in love when they're young but Fermina the woman ends up marrying this rich guy and in order to live through that heartbreak um, Florentino decide goes through something like 622 affairs in his life and so 50 years later the husband of Fermina dies and Florentino shows up at the at the burial at the funeral to try and win her back try and get back into his life into her life and her back in his and so yeah we'll see how that turns out how that happens but I've heard beautiful things about the way that he writes that it's beautiful and complex but also very accessible to everyone so I am intrigued and I want to read this one because I, I read that other one back in high school I think for Spanish class so I probably didn't pay very much attention but I'm going to now and I'm probably gonna reread that one again once I once I get to that to this one and so yeah there are a bunch of other books that I want to get to there's one like called like Jackie they got the ones to kick your ass um, Gabby a girl in pieces I wrote some of them down because I don't want to forget them and that's exactly what I'm doing now but um, I want to get this awesome book that I've heard a lot about that's about the young lords um, and their fight for liberation in New York. So if you don't know about them, you should look them up because they are some awesome, awesome people. No, I lost my list. Nope, no, I didn't. Um, I want to read anything by Pablo Neruda, anything by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, anything by Isabel Allende, anything by Benjamin Aguirre Sáenz, anything by Juno Diaz. Um, I want to read war on all puerto ricans that one is going to mean a lot to me because i am from puerto rico i want to read juliet takes a breath which is i believe another um lgbt read as well and i've heard really great things about that one and another one how the garcia girls lost their accent i don't know anything really about those books but i've had them on my list for a really long time and so i really want to get to them if you've read any of them please let me know down below i'm sorry if the second half of this video was a little bit rushed but this is the third time that i'm recording this and this is hopefully the final time that i'm going to record this so um if you have any recommendations please list them down below i'd love to get to know more books that i should read if you've read any of these please let me know what you think um i hope you guys have a wonderful wonderful hispanic heritage month and that you learn a lot and uh please communicate with me through all my social media i'm, I'm very active in all of them so please let me know if you do at some future time get to one of the books that i've recommended what you think of it about it if you again have a recommendation for me i'm always up to listening to other people's recommendations i love it when people read a book and think about me and let me know about it so please do that and uh yeah thank you guys so much for listening and for watching and i'll see you later on another video bye